As gamers, we've all come across that one feature that we want to change, even in games that we love. Sometimes that one thing is so bad that it makes you want to leave the game even with all the other good qualities that the game has. Project Frontier wants to change that by giving players creative control at any time in any game. The two people you see on screen here are Mike and Nick. They are basically brothers who co-founded Project Frontier together. Mike is the CEO who previously worked at Epic for Unreal Engine's licensing and consumer regulations before switching over to operations and strategy for the rest of Epic's products. Nick is the CTO who was an engineer for Epic. He worked on games such as Gears of War 2, Gears of War 3, and Robo Recall, as well as Fortnite and Fortnite Creative. Nick designed Slate, which is the UI UX framework for Unreal Engine 4, and was also a tech lead for Verse, which is another programming language that they use for the Unreal Editor for Fortnite, the product director for Omni Creator Products, which is basically the parent company behind Project Frontier, Deepak is the one who reached out to me about this game. He previously worked on titles such as Fortnite, Roblox, and Tomb Raider. And if you join their Discord, which will be in the description below, you'll also meet their community manager, Anissa, who was a Twitch and Discord moderator for about 10 years and also moderated some content for Smosh. The inspiration behind Project Frontier seems to stem from a desire they had as kids to make games, but of course they couldn't because making a game is incredibly difficult. But they decided that, you know, as adults with all the experience they have, they wanted to make a game that if other people wanted to, they could basically make their own game with the foundation that Project Frontier sets for them. We call that Sandbox Creator Lab. Within Creator Lab, we're building our own game. Okay, it's not a template project, this is a full-on game. We call it Project Frontier. So it's a session-based game. You're on a team, it's PvPVE. It takes that magic of survival games and also gives you a more directed goal, gives you a nice time box to do it. And you're out there with your own team plus a bunch of other teams who you can either fight with or ally with or just ignore. They explained to me that the vibe they're going for for this game is kind of like a Valheim meets Helldivers thing, but from what I've seen so far, they really come off more like a Roblox meets Minecraft meets Fortnite. I can see the Valheim part because there's definitely some crafting survival-esque things that you can do there, but I don't know so much about Helldivers. Um, we'll see how that turns out more in the future. Um, and the long-term goal is that you come in as a player you come in to play project frontier and then you re you have this experience of hey man i can make a better weapon or that boss was cool but i've got a better idea or you know i was talking to my friends and here's an awesome quest and you can just click a button go into creator mode make it and share it back directly with the game right that that's the vision we want everyone to be able to start personalizing the game basically this is a game that puts modding as its forefront if you want to make better NPCs, different bosses, different points of interest, you can do that. They believe that basically by giving players the full creative control over the kinds of games they play, they can keep it from getting sort of boring, which can happen after you've played a game so much for so long. Games are kind of sterile, you're passively consuming it. And we wanted to make sure that everyone could really be an active participant. And like we turned this up, we turn this up to 11. So when I mean Project Frontier is made in Creator Lab, it is entirely made in Creator Lab. So all of the code to Project Frontier, to the, the gameplay side of it, is available in Creator Lab. So when you go into play it and you're like, hey, I wanna turn this into my own game that's completely different than what these guys did on Project Frontier. While playing, you can just open up the code, start tweaking with it and play your own thing. Even the maps are going to be procedurally generated basically to make sure that no two matches are the same. That's right, that's right. So we're finished, we're wrapping up the procedural generation tech. So in the playtest in June, we're gonna be playing on a, on a static map. The later in the summer, uh, procedural generation is gonna come online. It's, it's almost working, not quite there. Basically, Project Frontier is made to allow you, the player, to put either as little or as much customization into your games as you would like. So what we're, the reason we've done all this tech investment is we want the best of both worlds. We want to let someone generate a POI, make it really, really nice, 
and then the PCG map is going to pull it in, but it's going to pull in a different combination of POIs. It's going to put them in different places, right? And we can constantly update the POIs we have, as can the creators. So what you're going to get is you're going to get the best of both worlds. You'll have a procedurally generated map, so each playthrough will be different, but you're still going to have that bespoke, handcrafted, beautiful landmarks that you interact with. Assets that you make and save in Creator Lab are basically going to, at least in the future, they plan to have it integrate into the surrounding area so it looks like it actually belongs. It's like, I say this as an insult to me, it looks like I placed an object on it and just put it on top. It breaks the immersion a little bit. So the idea with the tech is like, hopefully, there's a quotation marks, it'll sort of like build into the ground. You sort of have the grass come up a little bit, like it'll integrate. Yep. Yeah, that's exactly that's exactly how it works. So, so the benefit is if you're a creator, you don't have to worry about like, you can just build your castle, you make a beautiful castle, and the PCG will just drop it in and it'll feel like it'll naturally fit into the tech. Now, future looking, so this is probably a next year thing. We're also working on like, we call them dies, but there'll be material overlays on it. So for example, if you build one castle, and it's in a snowy it's in a like a grasslands biome it'll look like a grasslands castle and then if it gets dropped in a snowy biome the snow will be automatically added to it so you don't have to go make you know like a forest castle and a snow castle you can just build it once we'll take care of the variations for you and I know I've been talking about code a lot, but a lot of the changes and modding that you're able to do, you can do with sliders in the game. You don't actually have to know code in order to kind of participate in the creative process. Our goal is to let you express any sort of humanoid just using the sliders in the app. Later on, once we've polished that system, we're gonna do the same thing for creatures. So if it's a quadruped creature, you can do the same. You can, you know, make a giraffe, make an elephant. Um, so the goal is to put as much customizability at the hands of creators with just a few clicks. They seem to be following in the footsteps of the big AAA games that basically are free to play, but really kind of subscription based because they'll be implementing a battle pass sooner rather than later, which I don't really know how to feel about it as I personally prefer just playing paying one price for a game and then that's it but it is kind of different as there's going to be constantly new content so maybe that's worth it to some people i think it really depends on how well they actually execute the game and we'll see from there the way we also do plan though to monetize the game at least right now is similar to a fortnite model so even though you can customize all these characters and npcs the idea is we will be free to play at least quotation marks i say for now um, and the idea is like you can then switch out any skin for whatever you want and then create the loadout you want. Right now when you play the demo with Mike, it's class based, but we're going away from class based because we wanted to give more agency to players. So the idea is be whatever skin you want also in the world and and pick it the loadout you want because we think that gives the most agency. And the only the other thing you'll see as we continue this development journey is Right now, the world is sort of like, I call it more of like a tech build and placeholder art, even though it's, you'll see actually some really good grass and trees because we're testing like um, Unreal 5 features as well. So, but you'll see the world throughout the year get better and better and better and the art get better and better. That's right. And just, just to, to be very clear, I think our plan is, our plan is near the end of next year. So 2025 to go into early access. At early access time, we're just gonna have a, a box price for the game. So you, you know, you pay and you get in. We, our goal is once we're exiting early access to move to fully free to play. Just fully free to play Fortnite-like economy for Project Frontier itself. We wanna give creators as much flexibility to monetize their own creations as possible. But for, for Project Frontier, our first party game, it's gonna start out early access as a box paid product. And once we leave early access, we'll move it to um, to a free to play model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll we'll have a battle pass probably from, from day one, right? But obviously if you're paying to get into the game, we're not gonna double charge you for the battle pass. Um, once the game, once we go out of early access and go fully free to play, 
uh, the plan would be to um, the plan would be to monetize through a battle pass and through additional cosmetics for the first party game. Like I said, we don't really want to limit how creators monetize, so we'll we'll give you creators a lot of flexibility on how they want to monetize, similar to the way that um, a Roblox would do it. Now the game will be available on almost any platform and there will be no limits on the actual ability of you to mod anything in the game. Basically, no, only PC can do this, only Xbox can do this, or anything like that. Early access, our initial launch platform is going to be PC. We're then gonna to expand to console and, and iOS. And depending on what the Switch 2 looks like, we'd love to come to Switch 2 if it'll be a possibility. It's just gonna be a hardware question on the Switch. Project Frontier is open to licensing IPs, so basically if you wanted a character from DC, Marvel, Disney to kind of join the game and they give them the ability, like the right to do that, they definitely could. But they're also open to doing it for influencers like YouTubers or people from Instagram or some other place, maybe Twitch. That will allow them to sort of bring in files from that, but they have to be more careful about it because it could quickly become like a legal issue if that process isn't done correctly in an ideal world anything that goes into project frontier is fully available for the creators right so if let's say we're lucky and disney licenses us mickey mouse and we've got a mickey mouse character in project frontier you will be able to use project frontier and creator uh, you'll be able to use mickey mouse in creator lab right i can't guarantee that because we, we obviously haven't started these conversations, but that's our philosophical, that's our philosophical approach. Um, the cool thing is because we're built on top of Unreal Engine 5, let's say you're Disney and you reach out to us and you're like, hey, we'd love to put Spider-Man uh, or we'd love to put uh, the Hulk in here. They can just give us the Unreal Engine files for the Hulk or Spider-Man or whatever. We can just import them into Creator Lab and it basically works out of the box. After our conversation, I got to join the playtest for a little bit. As you can see here, he's just basically showing me how the carts work. The cart is basically like your home base. You can craft different things on different sides of it, basically for yourself, for the carts, or for other people. So basically upgrades for your weapons or for your little base here. We have inventory, you can see in the bottom left, and we basically have our missions in the top left. We have to use this pickaxe to kind of chop down wood. Then he shows me how to move the cart basically so that it follows us while we're moving through the world. I'm basically that pirate over there who's just kind of just <laughs> doing nothing but moving it. The cart is kind of pulled by that big man there. I didn't realize it at first, but it was kind of funny to me. We come across some NPCs and while he's like taking them out like a god with a sword, I'm over here trying to figure out how to use the pistol. He's good, he takes out like two or three of these guys before he dies and respawns. And I'm still trying to take out the one guy <laughs> with my pistol and I'm downed and he comes and he picks me back up. Come to find out, basically the NPCs were protecting this resource point here. I have to put down this wood log, which is basically going to suck up all the wood in the area. So we don't really have to chop down a bunch of trees one by one if we don't want to. This will basically speed up that process. We call the cart back and I'm finally like, let me upgrade my pistol so I don't fall down as easily as I just did trying to fight people. I'm still hurt of course, so I pull out this health potion which I crafted. It's kind of like an area of effect potion where you have to stand in it, but that means your enemies can stand in it too, so you have to be careful about when you choose to use it. While I'm looking through the other things to craft on the cart, he decides to go and fight this bear over here, which apparently you can block with the samurai sword, which is kind of insane to me, but he takes a lot of damage from the hits that he does take. It seems that most of the NPCs have only like one attack right now, which is okay for like a pre-early access build. I'm sure they're gonna get more obviously in the future, but that's just kind of how it is right now. Here he's showing a little bit of the creator lab stuff that you can do. Basically what kind of preset characters they have and how you can change them. You can add the name, save it. In there, the same thing with the wolf. You turn into this little blob thing when you're in creator mode as well. He spawns everybody in on two different teams, basically bears versus wolves. That's me, he's assaulting right there. And then he goes and attacks everybody else. Bear basically two shots everything. So I'm over here running for my life, you know. 
After he takes me out, he makes the bears small and the wolves really big, but he still has like the same power as a full grown wolf, so he's out here taking people out. I Listen, love it. back up! Back up! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you going? Oh, and space bar, space bar will turn on the the glider. This is awesome. Look at me. Yeah. You're just floating. And that was pretty much the end of it. Of course, I am going to be covering more of the animal mods for this game. At least that's what I'd like to do once it comes out, because there should probably be tons that are constantly being made with everybody having a hand in the creative process. But that's what I'm mostly interested in for the game. Overall, this game is very ambitious, but I do support what they're trying to do. Make sure you guys, if you enjoy the game and you want to join the playtest, that you use the link that I have below in my description. This will be a very limited kind of playtest. Not everybody is going to get in, so definitely use that so you can get in early. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to check out the other videos that I've made on my channel, and I will see you in the next video.